This is episode 378 of the Beyond the Food Show. And today, we're going to talk about the number one health habit for women that no one is considering and why it has the most impact on our well-being. Let's do this. Welcome to the Going to Beyond the Food Show, the only podcast that teaches you how to reshape your mind not your body, to make your life better, bigger, and bolder, your undieted life. I'm your host, Stephanie Dodier, reformed dieter, nutritionist, and coach. You ready? Let's do this. Hey, my sisters, welcome back to the podcast. This is likely going to be one of the shortest episodes I ever recorded. Because I want to get straight to the point and I want to uncomplicate this process of thinking about which health habit is most important for us as women to consider and to work on getting in our habit portfolio. So I'm going to go straight to the point here as a clinical nutritionist who has worked with women who have been dieting for years. What I consider the number one health habit that has the most impact on our well-being and that unfortunately no one talks about. You ready? The way we talk to ourselves in our mind. The way that we meet ourselves, the way that we cultivate our internal dialogues, our mindset, the way we think about ourselves. That's what I consider to be the number one habit that women have to onboard. Let me explain to you why. So I'm a 47-year-old woman who is in the age of perimenopause, and I'm going through perimenopause. And when I look at social media, when I read articles and blogs about health for women in my period of age, what I keep hearing all the time is you need to eat more protein. You need to do muscle building exercise, which is fine and dandy, which is absolutely true. Right? We, we talked about that with the menopause nutritionist a few episodes ago. I think it was last episode. Yeah, it is true that we need to consume more protein. And it is true that there's extreme value in having a muscle building workout routine. But guess what? Executing on these habits, these other habits require one thing. It requires you cultivating a supportive, motivating, kind internal dialogue. I've been teaching habits in my prior career in the context of working in a corporate structure and working in sales and implementing sales plan, which In order for us to execute the sales plan, we needed daily habits in our businesses that I was supervising in order to generate the revenue. And it's the same thing when it comes to your health. We know from science that there's a number of habits like eating enough food, like moving your body that we need to implement in our life in order for us to live a full life, to have access to the full potential of our health that is accessible to us. But in order to create that behavior on a long-term spectrum, meaning you're going to show up moving your body two to three times a week for the rest of your life, Not five or six times a week for six months because you are on a plan, but instead moving your body however that brings joy to you for the rest of your life consistently. These are long-term behavior that needs to become part of who we are 
I have been teaching people how to do that in the context of business and for the last eight years now in the context of health, specifically for women who have been under the influence of diet culture and have been dieting and restricting for a long time. So I have a very niche specialty and I can tell you I have written books about how to like onboard new habits. I've given classes, forums, seminars. I can give the most detailed protocol for women to onboard health habit. But if they don't have that one habit on generating an inner conversation with themselves that is kind and compassionate, no habit will be onboarded long term. And we know that, not just from my experience, we know that from science, we know that from research, the field of cognitive behavioral therapy or coaching in the case of what we do in my world, we use cognitive behavioral modeling, which is a field of research linked to the science of understanding the behaviors of human being. When you look at the field of research on cognitive behavioral modeling or coaching, what you find is that human behavior, like walking, moving your body, eating enough food, mental health, emotional health, what creates consistency is not a rigid plan, a list of things to do. It's creating a motivational feeling, a excitement, joyful feeling in looking to create and having the behavior. It's being excited about doing the thing. It's looking forward to moving your body, not, oh, I have to do this. Oh my God, I don't want to go there, but I just have to go there, which is how I used to be when it came to health behavior, because it was associated with shrinking my body and suffering and, and all the things that diet culture taught us. So having to learn to be excited about moving my body, oh my God, that took some work. And the work had to do with me generating an inner feeling of excitement, of motivation, of support, kindness, and compassion towards myself. I needed to change the way I thought about myself, the way I thought about my health, the way that I thought about my health behavior. I had to change the narrative from I have to, I choose to. And that was a lot of reprogramming. Because in my case, 25 years of I have to, I ought to, (laughs) I should, needed a lot, like literally hundreds and hundreds of repetition of me saying, no, 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 no. I choose to go for a walk because I enjoy walking while listening to a podcast. I had to literally retrain my brain to think about habits, to think about myself. I want to take care of my body. I am worthy to take care of my body, even if I don't lose weight. I am worthy to invest time and resources in generating more strength in my body, even though I'm going to remain fat. Like I had to change the way that I thought about myself in the context of my health and in the context of me not doing it the way that I thought it should be. So as I'm recording this episode right now, and for those of you who perhaps are watching me on video, I'm looking in a different direction right now. I'm looking at my habit tracker because I track habits 
at the beginning of my journey of learning habit. This is something that I'm teaching to people when I teach about health habit. By the way, if you are joining on Diet Your Life, if you're joining us live before Saturday, October the 13th, you will be able to attend live. We're talking 2023, by the way. <laughs> I don't know when you're listening to this. But if you're joining on Diet Your Life before October 13, 2023, you'll be able to join us in October and November as I teach Health Habit School. And that's one of the things I'm going to teach in there is pick one habit, one, not 10 or 15, one habit and then set a goal with something called minimum baseline. That's a tool that I teach. And then track it. And the reason why you want to track, so I'm tracking right now two habits that I've onboarded over the last six months. One being as a result of a knee injury that I had, we diagnosed the physical therapy team, diagnosed a bunch of imbalances in my legs and they gave me a series of mobility exercise to do and strengthening and stretching exercise and quite honestly this is going to be for years to come that I'm going to have to do them so about four months ago I started to build the habit to do these mobility exercise once a day so four months ago I onboarded this new habit of doing these exercise and about a month ago I wanted to onboard the enjoyment of walking, not walking to exercise or to move my body as a way of regulating my nervous system, calming down, processing my thoughts. It's more for mental health and emotional health than it is for physical health. Long story short, I started to track that. So I'm looking at my wall right now with my habits and I have a goal for each habit, right? I want to walk three times a week at the end of the day. And I want to stretch once a day, six days a week. And I don't do it. I don't stretch six days a week. I just started walking for nervous system regulation. And I don't walk three times a week. How do I meet myself when I don't achieve the goal? That's part of habit building. That's this whole number one health habit I'm talking about, how we talk to ourselves. I used to track habits in the past and the concept, some of you probably know about that, smart goals, right? The corporate world was all over that 10 years ago when I was there. I don't know if it's still the case today. And we used to track it and we used to shame ourselves for not achieving our goal or we oppositely used to like put people who achieve their habit on a pedestal those who executed a hundred percent we need to celebrate them and we need to like cheer them on and they were the best people in the world and by assumption those who didn't achieve perfection were shamed and as a result I built the habit that if I wasn't perfect in my habit I would shame myself. So looking at my habit tracker is training myself to meet myself with compassion, kindness, and understanding. So I'm looking at last week's habit. There's two days that I didn't stretch. One day is because I decided to go out with friends go out for dinner and to go out for social time. And when I came back home, I just wanted to go to bed and I prioritized my sleep. I made the decision to not stretch that day. The second day I didn't stretch again, I made the decision to not stretch because I wasn't feeling good. And the last thing I want is execute on a habit from a place of I have to when really I don't want to. That's the old way of habit from my culture. And there is no way I'm repeating that pattern of I have to because I know where it leads to. It leads to doing it until you don't do it. And then spending months 
and years not doing anything. That was my pattern for exercising the whole time I was part of diet culture. I would exercise and I would hate it and push myself to do it and push myself to do it and push myself until like, I'm like, fuck it. I don't want to do it anymore. I hate this. And then I would spend a year or two without moving my body. Does that sound familiar? The antidote to that is being able to look at the results with understanding and compassion, knowing that you made choices and say, okay, we start again next week. How easily does that come to you? What I have found over the years of working with my very specific niche is that conversation, that how we talk to ourselves, how we treat ourselves, isn't easily compassion, kindness, and understanding. That's why I say it's the number one habit, because when we can have this narrative, these thoughts in our brain of kindness and compassion towards ourselves and understanding and belief and trust, then we can create excitement for the habits and not I have to. We can create motivation. Many people want more motivation towards their health habits. Motivation is a feeling. It's a feeling that we create by the kind of thoughts we think about ourselves. So if we want to create motivation, we need to have kind thoughts, belief, thoughts that we believe about ourselves. We're going to get there. I'm going to do it. I believe in myself. So to me, the way I teach health habits, I talk about the four bodies of health, mental health, emotional health, physical health, and spiritual health. For me, that mindset, that inner narrative is part of the mental health bucket of habit. And for me, that's the number one thing we need to onboard. There's no point of moving your body. There's no point of thinking about your nutrition if the inner conversation is really shitty. That's what we need to tackle first. That's what we need to onboard. That is why inside of Undiet Your Life, the very first module is the module where I teach you on how to manage your thought, more specifically, your thoughts about yourself. So I wanted to put that in a podcast. So as people scroll through the feed and they see the number one health habit, I want to get it out to the world. The number one health habit you can onboard is cultivating an inner narrative about yourself one of kindness, one of love, one of support, and one of compassion. Do that first. Cultivate that. Make that something consistent and solid and watch yourself. Pick any health habit afterwards and kicking butt on boarding those health habits with ease, joy, and trust. I hope this helped you, my sister. If you need some help with both the mindset and the health habit, join us inside of Undiet Your Life. That's the work we do there. I love you, and I'll see you on the next podcast. If you are loving what you're learning on the podcast, you have to come and check out Undiet Your Life. This is where we get to hang out together, where you get the individual help applying the concept thought on the podcast while learning new coaching tool that will make your life even more amazing. It's also where you get to apply the learning to think better, eat better, and feel better, and create your undieted life, your better, bigger, and bolder life. Go to stephaniedoze.com forward slash join. I'd love to have you join us inside of Undiet Your Life, and I'll see you on the other side.